Welcome back, I'm Mistgun, and today we're bringing you Colin Thilly's Storm Boy, a children's book made into a game. Storm Boy lived with Hideaway Tom, his father. Years before Storm Boy's mother had died, he had left Adelaide and gone to live like a hermit by the sea. The only other man who lived anywhere near them was Fingerbone Bill, the Aboriginal. At first, Hideaway was afraid that Storm Boy would get lost, and so Hideaway looked for a landmark. One day, he found a big piece of timber lying with the driftwood on the beach. There, said Hideaway, now you'll always have a lookout post. You'll be able to see it far up the beach won't get lost. Some distance from the place where Hideaway and Fingerbone built their humpies, the whole stretch of the Corrigan and the land around it had been turned into a sanctuary. In the early morning, the tall, bir tall birds stood up, clapped, and cheered the rising sun. Stormboy felt the excitement and wonder of it. He often sat on the shore all day with his knees up and his chin cupped in his hands. Sometimes he wished he'd been born an ibis or a pelican. His, father, his father's voice roused him, and he ran down to the beach to help dig up a bag full of cuckles for their own tea. When Stormboy went walking along the beach, or over the sand hills, or in the sanctuary, the birds were not afraid. They knew he was a friend. Hello, Mr. Penguin, said Stormboy each day. How are your bits of thistledown today? But sometimes Stormboy saw things that made him sad. In spite of the warnings and notices, People hurt the birds. One morning, Storm, Storm, Boy, Storm Boy found everything in an uproar and confusion. He heard a faint rustling and crying, and there, under sticks of grass and of the broken nests, there were three tiny pelicans still alive. Stormboy picked them up carefully and hurried back to Hideaway with them. Two of the baby pelicans were fairly strong, but the third was desperately sick. It was three days before the baby pelican was well enough to sit up and ask for food. And that was how Miss and that was how Mr. Proud, Mr. Ponder, and Mr. Percival came to live with Storm Boy. Last Hideaway spoke sternly to Storm Boy. Mr. Proud, Mr. Ponder, and Mr. Percival will have to go back to the sanctuary where they came from. We just can't afford to feed them anymore. T 
time for respectable pelicans to get their own breakfast, Hideaway grumbled, instead of begging from their friends. And as time went on, he really meant what he said. Stormboy was sad, but he always knew his father had made up his mind. But he already knew his father had made up his mind. Yes, Dad, he said. Hideaway sailed for five miles up the sanctuary before he stopped the boat. Off you go, he said. Now you'll have to look after yourselves. Hideaway and Stormboy spent the day fishing. It was fine and sunny, but somehow seemed cold. Mr. Percival, it's Mr. Percival. Mr. Percival has come back home. Ever since the miracle of Mr. Percival's rescue, he had been Stormboy's favorite. Stormboy often had fun on the beach with Mr. Percival. If he collected shells along the beach, Mr. Percival went with him, either waddling importantly along at his heels or flying slowly above him in wide circles. Whenever he threw the ball, or a smooth pebble, or a sea urchin, or an old fishing reel, Mr. Percival snapped it up and brought it back. Storm Boy went swimming or sliding down the sand hills or playing on the sand. Mr. Percival found a good spot nearby and perched there heavily to watch and wait until it was over. One day, as Hideaway was watching them play, he had an idea. If he can bring things back to you, perhaps he can carry things away, too. It was the year of the great storms. They began in May, even before winter had started. In the darkness of the early morning, Stormboy suddenly woke with Hideaway's voice in his ears. It's a wreck, Hideaway said. A shipwreck on the shore. 
Look at them, Stormboy yelled. We must help them. They'll be drowned. How can we help, said his father. We can't throw a line. It's too far. Stormboy gave a great shout. Mr. Percival! Mr. Percival is the one to do it. He can fly. Between them, they all slowly hauled the captain ashore and dragged him pale and half-drowned onto the beach. Saved, he whispered weakly. Saved by a miracle and a pelican. You're a big, wonderful bird, he said. He looked up at the hideaway. When he dies, you must send him to the museum. They'll put a label on the case, the pelican that saved six men's lives. Hideaway looked around quickly. He was glad Stormboy hadn't heard the captain's words. For the rest of the year, everyone was happy. The storms went back to the cold south. The sun warmed the sand hills, and the spring ran the countryside, <laughs> ran over the countryside with new leaves and little bush buds. Before long, open season for duck shooting came around again. From the start, Mr. Percival hated the shooters. He harried them whenever he could, and sometimes he just sat staring at them rudely till they grew impatient and chased him away. But most of all, he flew round and round their hiding places in wide circles like a cumbersome old aeroplane on patrol. Before long, the ducks understood Mr. Percival's warning and kept away. The, shoot the shooters grew angrier and angrier. And so it went till one terrible warning in February. Don't! Don't shoot! It's Mr. Purse! His voice was drowned out by the roar of the gun. In the world, Hideaway said sadly, there will always be men who are cruel, just as there, are, just as there will always be men who are lazy or stupid or wise or kind. Today you've seen what cruel and stupid men can do. And at nine o'clock, Mr. Percival died. Mr. Percival, Stormboy whispered, you're the best, best friend I've ever had. As always, above them, in their mind's eye, they can see the shape of two big wings in the storm clouds and the flying scud. Two wings of white with trailing black edges, 
spread across the sky. For birds like Mr. Percival do not really die. There it is. There was <laughs> the gameplay of Colin Thilly's Storm Boy. I hope you read this as a child and enjoyed it then as much as you can enjoy it now. And hopefully you see this and all your childhood memories come flooding back to you. A sad story, but a good story. I enjoyed it and I hope you did too. My name's Miss Gun.